This video is all about patterns in electron flow. So whereas in the last lesson we focused on structural patterns, how the building blocks relate to one another and how two apparently different Lewis structures relate to one another. In this video we're going to focus on electron flow and examine how apparently different electron flows, apparently different sets of curved arrows, actually resemble one another. The foundation underlying all of this, the generalization that really allows us to see the pattern, are the sources and sinks that we've already seen. Things like n, sigma, pi, sigma star, pi star, and a. These are the labels that will allow us to unite apparently different looking sets of curved arrows. So in this video we're going to go two ways, right? We're going to go from the labels to curved arrows, and we'll see where multiple possibilities might arise when we go from labels to curved arrows. And then we'll go from curved arrows back to labels as well. I've gone ahead and laid down for us those sources and sinks that we've seen in a previous video. I put the sources on the left here and the sinks on the right. And what I'd like to do first to get us starting to see patterns in electron flow is to look at a popular example of a reaction that has some applications to enzyme catalyzed chemistry and that is the enamine mediated aldol reaction. So the enamine functional group is what you're seeing here. It's an amine attached to a double bond, hence the enamine functional group. And it reacts with an aldehyde. And a key step of this process, let's say there's acid around, so the aldehyde is is protonated. A key step of this process is attack of the enamine at the carbon of the protonated aldehyde. The curved arrows for this key step look something like this, and it's an important step because it establishes the key carbon-carbon bond in the product. So the resulting structure contains a positively charged nitrogen now, a new carbon-carbon bond, and the oxygen atom is now neutral. Our task in identifying the underlying pattern of these curved arrows is to first understand what's the key interaction here. In other words, which arrow is, is really depicting what I like to call the business. Typically, the key interaction can be found wherever there's a sigma bond forming, or a sigma bond breaking. And this is because sigma bonds indicate typically chemical change in nuclear movement. When a sigma bond forms or breaks, we're looking at a completely new species coming out of this process. And so more often than not, when sigma bonds form and break, chemical change is involved. Using this principle as sort of a guiding light to view the curved arrows, we can see that this arrow in the middle is very key because it's actually showing the formation of a new single bond between the carbon, the enamine, and the carbonyl carbon of the aldehyde. So the question then becomes, what are the source and sink for the key interaction? And you may wonder why it's useful at this point to classify the curved arrows according to some labeling scheme. And the answer is it allows us to connect reactions that look on the surface different. So I mentioned before that this is an enamine mediated aldol reaction. It has the same name as the aldol reaction, but in fact the aldol reaction uses an enolate instead of an enamine. But the fundamental electron flow in the key step that establishes the carbon-carbon bond in both reactions is the same. So by applying these labels to the electron flow, we can see and organize the underlying patterns. So how do we identify the source and the sink after identifying this key interaction? Well, we start with the arrow that establishes the new bond, and that's the central arrow in the drawing I've set up for us here. I'm going to redraw what we had originally only with that key arrow to start things off. So I'm cutting out everything else that's unnecessary, cutting out the BS, as I like to say. And this first arrow tells us a lot about the electron source, where the first arrow originates. And again, that first arrow 
is the origin of the key interaction or the key electron flow, in this case establishing a new sigma bond. That tells us about the source. Where that arrow begins will tell us what the electron source is. And what we can see is that the arrow begins at a pi bond, and so the source is a pi bond in this case. Now, what about the sink? Well, the arrow that follows the source arrow tells you about the nature of the sink. In this particular example, we see an arrow going from the carbon-oxygen double bond up to oxygen, indicating that the pi bond is breaking. And so from the second arrow, we can conclude that the sink then must be a pi star orbital or a pi star electron acceptor. So the key again to this process, use the first arrow of the key interaction to establish your source and the second arrow to establish the sink. On the whole, the electron flow is an example of pi to pi star electron flow, where pi is the source and pi star is the sink. And we use this notation to indicate key electron flow or key interactions. The source comes before an arrow and the sink to which that source flows comes after the arrow. Now you may be wondering, what about this arrow way back up at the top coming from the nitrogen's lone pair down? What you'll realize actually is that that arrow is entirely optional. It's optional because if we left it out, the product that we would get would just be a resonance form of the product that we drew. So in that case, just to show you what that would look like, that would have a carbocation instead of a positively charged nitrogen within it. And these two are just resonance forms of one another. And so that arrow is optional. It's what I call an internal arrow. Any arrows that indicate internal electron flow or the interaction of sources and sinks that are next to one another within the same molecule, well, that's just a reference to resonance, right? So internal arrows are optional, and they don't figure in to the key interaction. It's still pi to pi star, and we don't really care about the nature of that lone pair on nitrogen at all from the perspective of labeling and classifying the electron flow.